emoji. I'm not mad. Also, I didn't type emoji. I typed emoji. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do some true ending as different characters. To try to get some, some practice. Like Apollyon, for example. Things are going right already. Lady Luck! I'm talking Lady Luck. Put it all on seven. There's Snake Eyes. I'm ruined! See, Corey's got it, man. I don't even... Dude, we're never going to use everything Jar on purpose, but maybe by accident it'll do some awesome stuff for us. It is a great sketch. I watched that, that Tim Robinson episode of the characters again this weekend. They're not all, I think you should leave, quality winners. But they're, they're pretty good. And, like, Lady Luck is a great sketch. And then I, I really like the one where he goes into the gun shop. And uh, he's like, I need it for protection. And they're like, alright, try this on for size. And he goes, hey, are you the manager of the Red Robin? Get on the PA and tell everybody I didn't leave that mud pie in the bathroom. Hello. So I have made a chickpea avocado mango little snack for the baby. Mm. Uh, chickpea avocado mango. Yeah. It's pretty good. It's, it's for you. I think she should have it. You don't like it? I, uh... It's, it's, it's good for baby food, don't get me wrong. It's tasty. But she literally has to eat unseasoned food, right? Yeah. So I'm, you know. It's tasty. It, I mean, it's good, don't get me wrong. It's just not the kind of thing... I mean, I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't deprive my baby of it to get the experience myself. I thought that's what I tried. <laughs> Who? It is good though. Like, honestly, so Kate's making the baby food, um, like by uh, herself. Like we're not, we're going zero percent Gerberless, any percent baby uh, speed run. And that was the top tier baby food, no question. Like. Uh, Sometimes when I'm feeding her the food, I have to like sample a little bit just to make sure it's like the right uh, temperature. Like it's not gonna burn her or anything like that. And uh, I'm like, this is not my style. This is baby style. Sometimes I'm like, this is pretty good. Oh, no. oh I, I'm not the lost. I can take damage. Go ahead, hit me. Oh, dude, just try it on for size. That felt good. Baby food taste test when? Dude, it's like... Let me just put it this way. My two cents, there's a reason adults don't eat baby food. And it's because babies can't eat chicken tenders dipped in sweet and sour sauce. It's, it's too much flavor for them. They can't? Well, if you're over, like, maybe, like, nine months old, maybe? I don't know, like, it's... Kate's baby cookbook is so funny, like... Let me just go back a second here. Um, it's so good, because, like... When they start eating solid food around, like, six months... At six months, they're like... Give your baby, like, a little avocado, you know? Steam a, steam a yam, cut it up, and give your baby, like, a little piece of it. Uh, cut up a mango and, and give her a piece of that mango or something, right? Well, I can't get hit. You love to see it. Um, now, she's turning eight months in a couple of days. And the, the cookbook immediately has swapped to like, uh, like one of the things that was in there yesterday that we were laughing at is, it's like, Consider making your baby, like, a tomato fennel soup. And you're like, we've come a long way from, like, 
<laughs> like boiling rice until it becomes like a glutinous kind of porridge to a tomato fennel soup. But I guess like once you hit uh, eight months, they're, they're pretty much, you know, as long as you introduce things, you know, one or two things at a time, you, you get to, uh, you, like, there's no real dietary restrictions except for allergies, I guess, so. And obviously, like, you know, avoiding choking hazards and stuff like that, but. Yeah, so we're, we're going out for some baby ceviche tonight. <laughs> Give her... What, what kind of oysters on the half shell would you recommend for um, for an eight month old uh, for an eight month old infant nutritional contents important too that's what I'm, that's why we're getting oysters they're rich in zinc and she'll have the lobster Wellington. Maybe just a half size, though. <gasps> it is wild, though. Like, she can kind of eat with us now. As long as we're eating tomato fennel soup. Um, no, it's not that good. Uh, it's, the, it's simply the best. We can do it. We, I, I've got faith in this run. In some ways. <laughs> I like how, um, the, apparently, the everything jar literally just becomes, um, bad poop. Once every six rooms poop. Yeah, a half pint of Sleeman 2.0 for the baby, please. What is, isn't Sleeman 2.0? It's, it's like Coke Zero, but they can't get down to... Zero calories, so they have two grams of carbohydrates, which is like 10 calories or something. NL, did you watch Breaking Bad? No. Yes! <laughs> oh, man. Oh, and I was like, Giancarlo! That's right. Las, the, Las Pollos Hermanos, man. Oh. This is Night of the Roxbury. What if a Night of the Roxbury and Breaking Bad took place in the same universe? I don't know, Steve Butabi. You've been acting pretty sus lately. Did you just grab my ass? If you did, that's okay. I just want to know. I once recommended my friends watch Night at the Roxbury. It was so bad, they wouldn't let me pick a movie ever again. Dude, that's the worst when you... Like, if you recommend, like, an action movie to your friends and then you watch it together... You know, you kind of feel like you let them down if they don't, they don't like it. But a comedy is way worse. Because laughter is both... It's like contagious, right? So if you're the only one laughing at the jokes, oh man, that's that's rough. At least the movie's only like 82 minutes long, but <laughs> oh. anyway, yeah, lack lack of laughter. There's nothing worse than being like five minutes into a comedy. Nobody's even mustered a chuckle so far. You're like, this is gonna be a long 87 minutes. Either that or it's like a, it's an Oscar bait comedy where nobody laughs, but then at the end of it, they're like, best comedy of the year. That's how my friends react when I show them your content. I mean, I'm just gonna own it. Like, that's on you. Don't don't pull up to, like, your friend's place and be like, yo, NL's on right now. Like, that's when you watch, like, you know, you put something on the monitor that was made for entertainment. 
And you'd, you'd like have a conversation or so don't just put on a streamer where like if you don't pay attention for five seconds They're like, what's he talking about? Why are you you recommended this guy? He's talking about, you know, the for-profit education model again, dude. I just want to hang out Come on He's talking about how like he got railroaded in the Taking a pure science degree in in college, like I don't, we we could have been watching like Impractical Jokers right now or something. Dude, Kate showed me this Korean prank channel. I don't know what they're saying. Okay, there are subtitles, but the subtitles are a little like sometimes I'm like you just gotta figure it out for yourself. But honestly, is actually hilarious. Let me give you three pranks, okay? One of the pranks is. Uh, Hold on, I'm trying to pick which one to do first. Uh, telling your friend you have a surprise for them, and then they have to close their eyes, and then when their eyes are closed, you put a spoonful of rotten tofu under their nose, which is apparently like the most foul-smelling thing on the planet. Uh, then, when they go, you run away, and you go around the corner, and you have a paid actor standing there with his back to the person wearing the same clothes that you were wearing and you go hide so they run after you to like chase you down and then they like jump on the guy's back that they think is you but is actually just the person dressed like you designed to trick them and then the paid actor like goes like you know what the hell like why would you do that like you, and then they'd start explaining like, oh, well, my friend played a prank on me and you and him are dressed in the same clothes. And then they go, okay, well, fine, call him, get him over here. So then they get him over there, but he's already changed his shirt. So he's not even wearing the same outfit anymore. Like he's dressed completely differently. And then they're like, what are you talking about? He doesn't look like me at all. It's extremely good. So that, that was a good one. Um... There's always like two wrinkles. It's like a it's like a second layer prank, right? Um, another one they did is like this uh, Person was over at the guy's house who's like part of the prank channel. I mean I have to pause for this one like it's elaborate They filmed a scene outside of his bathroom window Where like the guy whose whose house it is Comes to the bathroom window and goes like don't trust the guy that's in there He's an imposter among us. Like, go ahead, ask him this question that only I know the answer to. He's not gonna know the answer. And then they put it on like a 4K TV and affixed it to the bathroom window so that when the lady went to the bathroom, like while she was in there, it looks like it's just the window, but actually it's just the, the video that they took of that guy outside. Um, and then, you know, they play it up like that, and then they're like, you gotta get out of the house! And then, when she goes to leave, he's standing right there, and then they're like, ah, we pranked you. It's really good. And then the one that I watched last night, they like... You know, they have like a, a, a female colleague with them. And then they start getting like, aggressively hit on by paid actors. And then they... Have this guy step in as like, the... the defender. Uh, but they've already, the, the, the catch is they've already done, like, a choreographed, uh, fight scene, so that it looks like he kicks the crap out of them, and they're, like, professional stuntmen. So they're doing, like, roundhouse kicks that he just flawlessly ducks under, and then he, like, knees them in the gut, and they fall into the bushes. It's great, man. And in one of them, he turns himself into a pickle. Funniest thing I've ever seen, man. What's it called? I have no idea. I have no clue. <laughs> it's all in Korean. <laughs> I I couldn't tell you if I wanted to. On Kate's stream, you, you should ask on Kate's stream. Because then when you ask as well, it'll give me brownie points. Because it means that she showed me content that I liked and I was talking about. So it'll be a win-win. You'll get the name of the channel, I'll get some brownie points as well. Is good though. I I, I recommend it. Eee. It's literally midnight. I'm going to bed in five minutes. You're gonna miss the wind though.
No, this is actually it, though. This is actually the win. We're gonna suck that up, then it's a win. How does it compare to Jackass? Dude, I'm- by the way, so, like, I'm- I'm all for the renaissance of people respecting Jackass. I've- there was about a decade where I was almost a pariah, where I had to apologize for liking Jackass, and now that, like, they're old and they're making Jackass 4, it really feels like people have come around to the idea that, like, look, it's a product of its time, but also, like, it was a model for how to have com camaraderie with male friends in the late 90s and the early 2000s. Like, it informed the way that, that I interacted with people and people interacted with me. In a way that is like, you know, I mean, if you're not on the same page, you don't want them to, like, use a staple gun on your nutsack or something like that. But it was a way that you could, like, I mean, it's toxic masculinity, I guess, but you could, like, show affection for your friend by being like, guess what, I just made you think that, you know, you'd wash your hands with my semen or something like that. It's, it, like, it's... You can only have those sorts of interactions, I think, with people that you... Oh, saved, saved. With people that you respect and, like, you're on the same page. Otherwise, you know, you wash out of it pretty quick. I think, like, it's the funniest show and also the movies are all very funny as well. That's my take on that. I will say, I, I think I got permanent spinal damage. I saw Jackass 3D in theaters. Uh, and after the movie, my friend was so amped up, he jumped on my back without me knowing uh, that he was going to do it in advance, and I just crumpled to the earth. And I think that I might have, like, a, a herniated disc for life as a result. But in many ways, it's worth it for the friends we made along the way. In many ways, I would say. <laughs> I'd do it again. It was not Malf. I could easily bear Malf's weight. With that, I, I wouldn't even miss a stride. Honestly, I would probably be like, oh, did someone just put helium in my backpack? Because it just feels like everything got a lot lighter. Feels like the world just got a lot lighter. No, we don't want it. Mouth did not beat me in a fight. I can't believe I'm still talking about this 11 years later. He did not beat me in a fight. He sucker punched me. And by sucker punched, I mean he put me in a chokehold when I was on my hands and knees cleaning my friend's hardwood floor in advance of a party he was throwing that night because I'm such a nice guy. He decided that that was an opportune time in a moment of great uh, generosity for me to uh, to hop on my back, put me in a chokehold, and then start shouting, Do you tap? Do you tap? I have four items. <laughs> Did I tap? I tapped. Of course I tapped. <laughs> He had me in a chokehold. If I hadn't tapped, he might have killed me. You've seen how he is in PUBG. Got one! <laughs> that was me! No, 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 no. Hey, why are you so fast? Stop it. You should make a tier list of how likely you would be to beat NLSS members in a fight. We're like, this channel has been around for so long. Like, we're really at like Simpsons did it territory, huh? I can't believe it. Yeah, that's an old bit. That video already exists. You didn't see it in the syllabus? <laughs> the syllabus? Stop, stop, just, come on, Eddie. This is, this room is beneath you. 
Give us brimstone. Don't be shy. Drop a brimstone. This is the point you hit on every Apollyon run, where you go, uh, actually, like, I thought the run was sweet, but actually it sucks. My bad. But I think we still got time to, to bail out of it. Lump of coal? Lump of coal and I'll be alright. Do you do the required reading? Um, the answer is yes, but... I, I will say, one of the reasons when I was in school that I did the required reading, like, in, in programming classes, there was very little of it, for one. And then also, I was taking one class a semester. Like... I think if you're taking one class a semester, and you don't do all the work, you should just drop out. Because your heart's clearly not in it. Maybe that's not a good reason to drop out, but like... I mean, if, if, if you can't find, like, a few hours a week to dedicate to the one course you have, maybe it's time to do some self-reflection. Just throwing your money away. If you got, you know, a huge course load, phrasing, it's almost like we're playing that dragon game, and you got, you know, 12 different courses you got to study for, and... You know, you, you got, a, you're may, maybe you're an adult, you're taking night classes, you got a full-time job, you got a family, like, you don't, you don't have to do all the required reading, but, you know, if you got one course, come on, man, come on. Book's not gonna hurt you. Why are you talking about being locked in a cage with Edmund? Talking about the dragon game again? <laughs> cage match? Edwin? Edwin cage match? My thing, like, with... Not even procrastination, but, like, when people tell me, like, oh, like, I didn't have time to do something, I don't judge them, necessarily. But I do always want to ask a follow-up question, which is like, tell me what the rest of your week look like. Because I want to judge you. <laughs> like I'm, he's, a, he's a really nice guy. No question about that. But like, I was, uh, when I was in programming class, I had a lot of classes with like one student in particular. I remember like one week, you know, he was, he was like, when do you start your assignments? And I was like, usually like the night after we get them, because that's when I have the most time. They're, you get assigned them like Tuesday, they're due the following Tuesday. So you got a, you got a one week window there, right? So you got to, you don't have a ton of time. You got to get them started pretty quick. And he was like, oh, I think I'm going to start this one. Like it's due on Tuesday. I think I'm going to start it like Sunday night. Um, and then... I, I was like, whatever, as long as you got time, like, it's not a big deal. Excuse me, excuse me, cat. Don't go into the cords. You. Get out of there. No, no, no. You go, 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 go. Cords, Luca. Come out. You. And then you try to grab him. He goes deeper into the freaking cords. Get out of there. Cam flickered? I told you, man. I told you. Get out of there. We, we should be safe, though. We should be safe. Mic dropped for a second, too. That's when you give one of these. That's me giving the finger. I'm not going to fight my cats. You give him one of these. Take one of those. Anyway. Yeah, Ruka and Toma, they're both here. Sometimes people are like, what happened to Ruka? You don't talk about him anymore. Usually he's not in my room. Anyway, uh, he's in Kate's office with the baby most of the time. But he was like, yeah, I'm just going to start it uh, on Sunday. And then on Tuesday, I showed up to class. I was like, how was the assignment? He's like, oh, yeah, actually, I said I was going to start it on Sunday. But I actually didn't get a chance to start it until um, Monday. 
because I just didn't feel like it. And then Monday at like 6 p.m. I started. I got an hour or so in, and then I had a problem uh, that I needed help with. But the professor didn't reply to my email in time. And as a result, I uh, was unable to finish it. And I will take a zero. And I was like, you know, it's... What'd you expect? Like, I, I don't mean to be glib. <laughs> like, wait, <laughs> what did you think was gonna happen? You gotta, you don't lose anything by doing the assignment early if you've got the time to do it early. In fact, some people might tell you it's a zero sum game, you know? Like, no matter when you do it, you gotta put in the same amount of time. I actually think you get more out of doing it early because you don't have to deal with the psychological annoyance of constantly having it on your mental books. You know what I mean? Like, I had some non-urgent but, like, time-sensitive stuff to do. I got, I got a couple of emails, like, on Monday that were like, Hey, by the end of the week, could you, uh, like, get back to me? Nah. I'll get back to you tonight because I don't want to be thinking about, Oh, I still got to send that email for the next, like, four days. And then just end up sending it anyway. Or even worse, just like do it late. And then be like, oh, sorry, I just saw this. Tomo, if you go down where I just kicked Ruka out of. I swear to God. I always wait to do my taxes last minute. It does nothing but stress me out. 100% literally like word for word been there. Is there not a battery out here? Am I crazy? Maybe not. Um, so what I do now is I just set... Uh, when I'm in a non... I'm trying to think of the word to descri describe it. Because like you can't really use the word aroused uh, on Twitch without getting bonked. I think we're going to try to suck that up. But like, you know, you're when you're trying to come up with a reason not to do something, you're in like an emotional state, you know? You're like, well, I don't have to do it because I could always do it tomorrow and technically I could always file for an exemption and blah, blah, blah. But like when I have a, there, I guess there's a principle, like it's always easier to give your time away later than it is to give your time away now. Like what's the number one thing if you were to ask someone to do something? They'd probably say like, oh, just give me a second. Just give me like, you know, five minutes or something like that. So what I and, and I think you can le I'm stupid. I think you can lean into that as as like a human being, right? So I know that I'm if someone's like, "Hey, can we do a quick call today?" I'm like, "Absolutely not. I'm way too busy." If they're like, "Can we do a quick call tomorrow?" I'm like, "Of course." Tomorrow me is a completely different person who probably won't be as busy. Spoilers. Every single day, I end up feeling exactly the same. Once I'm there, I'm like, why did I agree to this freaking call? This is so stupid. I didn't have to do this. Um, but tomorrow, you use a different individual in your head, I think. So, where am I going with this? What I do is when I know that the tax stuff is like starting to get onto the mental books, I... Uh, I just set a self-imposed deadline for myself that's like, oh, I don't have time to do it right now. It's Monday. But on Sunday, I know I'm going to have time. So I say, I'm going to do it this Sunday. Now, here's the catch. On Sunday, you actually got to knock that out. Because if you just go, um, well, it's not actually due for another two weeks, then you literally have not made any accomplishment in your life at all. So, you, you got it. What you do is you, you get a little pleasure and you get a little pain. So, what's the, what's the pleasure? The pleasure is the procrastination. Where you say to yourself, I'm going to not do it today and steal some enjoyment. And then in six days, you got to actually do it. And then you get both. You get, you get the good and the bad. That's, that's my take on procrastination. And instead of focusing on... What you lose by having to do it now, focus on what you gain by getting it done now. Which is uh, not having to think about it again. If you never do it, you'll always have enjoyment though. Yeah, but like, you'll go to uh, prison for tax evasion. 
like a hundred percent or or you'll get like heavily penalized by the irs i by the i'm not grabbing plug okay i don't want it i didn't get the card i didn't get the card that's all right cuz hold on we're 26 minutes just in time for boss rush delirium oh freaking I warned you. Yeah, but you warned me like 10 minutes ago. I needed that 10 I needed that 10 seconds ago. There's still a chance. There's still a chance. How? Don't think about it. It's still a great run, but there is no chance. Okay. Well, we'll just have a fun Apollyon then. <clears throat> I mean there's probably people in the in the chat right now who are like I don't I don't want to send a chill down your spine but like if you haven't been filing your taxes you should like knock that out you should close the tab and knock that out immediately I'm not just talking about 2021 like or 2020 I suppose like if you every once in a while like you'll you'll hear about this in public and it'll it'll blow your mind um, you'll meet someone who is like, oh, a buddy of mine, uh, just doesn't pay his taxes. And, like, you, you just you want to talk to them and be like, you know that, like, only works out for you, like, until it doesn't, right? Like, one day, they're going to be like... You haven't filed taxes since 2013. And what are you going to say? You're going to be like, Oh, really? And then they're going to be like, You owe us like $250,000. And you're going to be like, Oh, like, It's, it's going to be a bad day. My bad. I didn't know I could do that. Stop hitting me. Yeah, I feel this. I feel like sometimes... I mean, I don't have any evidence to back this up. But I do feel that sometimes, maybe, like... If you don't file your taxes for, like, a year... The IRS won't notify you. And they'll let that accumulate for, like, five years. So that they can... Profit way more. <laughs> I don't have any proof for that. But in my head, it's like... I feel like if you were running the IRS and your, your principal goal was to, like, maximize your revenue... I don't think you'd let them... You, after one year, you wouldn't tip your hand, right? You would wait until it was, like, five years and then you'd be, like... Busted, baby. Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? I don't know if that's actually the way it works. There's probably like some, there's like a, a Hippocratic Oath or something that's like, that's not how it works, but... IRS budget is actually bad. No, don't be underfunded. You're so sussy. <laughs> Just kidding, unless. <laughs> yeah, uh, hold on. I gotta think. Tomorrow's Thursday. We, 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 we so excited. I think this is gonna pay for itself, man. Guaranteed. Um, we'll We'll play some 60 seconds tomorrow. 60 seconds, all I ask for you is if you've ever been one of those people who's like, I hate analytics-driven stream programming, you acknowledge that this is the exception. Because the reason 60 seconds is coming back is A, because it's fun, but B, because it freaking performs like a freaking superstar, man. I don't know how or why, but it's all like... When I saw how it did in the YouTube VOD, I was like, that's insane. I'm, trust me, I'm not complaining. But I was like, I will play more, absolutely. 
I guess we're taken. Please acknowledge Tetris 99 analytics. Not that superior, unfortunately. We, we brought it back for a little tryout. I mean, it's not bad, but we brought it back for... It's not Tarkov. Like, it's not poison. <laughs> I mean, it's not like, you know, career suicide. It's not like Escape from Tarkov or anything like that. I mean, it's not like, you know, people are like, please, I'm going to leave if you keep playing this. <laughs> it's not like that or anything. Um, but yeah, it's not... It was not super spectacular. I do love Tetris 99, though. I wish, uh, wish Pac-Man 99 was, like, a little bit more pog-rich. It's still good. It just lacked the... It lacked the second-hand dopamine. NL, do you like Tarkov? Yes. No! <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, Tarkov for me, I and again, I've, I've said enough at the game's expense. I'm not trying to like, because a lot of people really like it. Here's what I'm going to say, though. I think it is the absolute platonic ideal of a game that is way more fun to play than it is to watch for the vast majority of people. When you're in Tarkov, it feels pretty intense. You're, you're raiding, you're looting... Every single sound that comes through your ears, you know, you're like, this is... I, it's it's high dopamine. But also high acetylcholine and very low serotonin. Watching it really just feels like watching a guy... It's like a administrative assistant simulator 2018. Like you're watching a dude just rifle through filing cabinets for little knickknacks. Let me in. I told you we're gonna win here. That sounds kind of nice. Mm, well, I'll prove it. Start watching Tarkov then. See you in five minutes. I also think the other thing about Tarkov, like the the imbalance, is uh, that it's so much fun for people who like it. It's so much fun to play. They can play like twelve hours a day. And I think they just reach a point eventually where, like, the audience is just begging, like, please, just one game of Minesweeper, please. Can we just have, like, one game of Minesweeper? I, w I took the wrong path. <laughs> I mean, I took the right path. Very ra any any percent speedrun technique incoming. It's all right. We, we can sneak in, like, one greedier run or something like that as a result of this. I liked watching Dan play Tarkov more than I liked watching you play Isaac. This is a perfect example of a tactless Tommy situation. Those two things do not need to be uh, opposed to one another. They're, they're unrelated. They have a correlation of zero. Secondly, you ever hear the expression, uh, it takes all, all types? There's always one. What does the expression mean? It means sometimes you'll be walking down the street and you'll see somebody, uh, you know, like maybe like Roller Girl in Vancouver who's got no shirt on and is roller skating through intersections yelling at traffic. And you go, you know what? Every city needs one of them. We don't know what they do, but somehow they're essential to the functioning of the ecosystem. So you shouldn't point fingers at people just because they're behaving in a, in a way that seems illogical and devoid of reason, because they serve some sort of purpose that is difficult to tease specifically what it is. However, you know, you'd, you'd miss them if they were gone. Let's put it that way. It's like sometimes... <laughs> sorry, I'm going to take this too far, but it's for humor purposes. You know, sometimes people are like, oh, I hate mosquitoes. And you're like, well, you know, if you eliminated mosquitoes, somehow the whole ecosystem would fall apart. I don't specifically know how, but... Surely, it's like if you pull the domino out, the rest of the things don't work. All right, Dr. Pangloss. Look at little little Voltaire reference. We have a very well-read uh, Twitch channel here. Little Voltaire reference. So 
soul of Apollyon. Why did he record that with a Logitech desktop microphone from 2009? That's so good. Ryan is perfectly defined by the fact that I've watched him play Isaac for like 20 hours and I have no idea what anything does. Chip, that's honestly an incre- and I know you meant it this way. That's an incredibly nice uh, compliment. Thank you. I was talking about it before as well. It was probably before you woke up, you know, because it's uh, New Zealand time. By the way, and I'm getting sidetracked here. How does New Zealand time work, okay? Because it was- I was going to bed last night, and then, uh, someone from New Zealand- Okay, we're gonna do a little slash marker, um, split. I, you're gonna have to watch the next part for the anecdote. 